Hey everybody, welcome to episode 228 of the Growing With Fishes podcast. This week we have uh, Jesse of the Auto Flower Show. Thanks a lot for joining us. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure being here. This, yeah. this is actually my first time live on YouTube. There you go. Yeah, It's always nice to give people their first times. <laughs> all right. Well, um, uh, it's been a, a pretty, uh, pretty wonky week, I think, for most people. It's definitely been a wild one for me uh, in many good ways. So definitely can't complain. So um, uh, if you guys are new to the show, uh, this is a regular uh, aquaponic and living soil education show. Uh, we try to put it on every Thursday. Sometimes we also do other days of the week, like Tuesdays, but uh, um, a lot of stuff going on this time of year. So we've been cutting it back to just the Thursdays. Um, if you're interested in aquaponic cannabis classes, we do have a full suite of aquaponic cannabis classes with over 600 lectures over at apmjclass.com. And we have a full suite of aquaponic nutrients uh, for cannabis growing or, or flowering crops over at apmjnutes.com. Uh, so be sure to check those out if there's uh, things that you might be needing. Uh, so thanks a lot for joining us, Jesse. Um, tell us a little bit about the Auto Flower Show and, and what you do. You, uh, you've you been putting a lot of effort into this for quite a long time, and uh, it was a lot of fun to come over on your show the other day, and uh, we thought it would be a lot of fun to have you over on ours. So thanks for joining us. Yeah, man, it's, uh, it's actually a, a real pleasure to be here. Um, <clears throat> Now to uh, to answer your question about uh, about the show and, and I guess first and foremost I haven't been doing it all that long. It's been uh, since COVID broke out. I uh, I released the podcast. It was April the first episode, of April twenty seventh, twenty twenty. Now um, before that, I was a musician, a, a full time musician, and then I was growing in tents and I was looking into auto flowers. Couldn't find a ton of information that wasn't um, on forums. <clears throat> and I, I wanted an audio version or videos, so to say, of, uh, of auto flowers. And, uh, and then it, it occurred to me that there was only one other auto flower podcast. And so I, I, I hit the, the road running pretty much. Man. And now that I bring up the music because I learned a lot about navigating social media trying to have a career in music and so it was like three years uh, where I was full-time music at night and then all day I was researching how to how to you know get my music out there and then I mean needless to say cannabis content sells itself right cannabis and cannabis content and so yeah that mixed with a little bit of foresight uh, the show has kind of taken off got to the point where it is very cool. So um, tell us a little bit about uh, some of the different guests that you've had on the show. Uh, what are some uh, any uh, notable people that you've had on or interesting conversations that have given you some kind of new rabbit holes or new uh, insight into um, into growing that really kind of changed the way you think? Well, I mean, first and foremost, having you on the show since then, I've had at least six or seven people reach out and tell me how it's one of their favorite episodes. Uh, period on my show and that's uh especially because you know you you did help and you went through the build and, and you helped us with just a four plant build for it and that's what my audience is I, I did I guess leave that out is and I'm catering to the small batch at home grower four plant grower um as far as other guests <clears throat> I've had I've featured firebuds genetics or firebuds 101 quite a bit him and I did an auto flower 101 it was like a live interactive growing class where we, we threw or we did the lives on instagram and it was like once a week for the duration of an auto flower crop we grew or we uh we went live and, and he told us what to do with our, with our crop because first and foremost with my show i i made it a point to let people know that i am a noob i'm not a seasoned grower i mean i've been i grew up in bc so i've been in and out of rec grows trimming and i've been around cannabis for a long time but as far as actually being a grower myself 
I, uh, yeah, actually being a grower myself, I, I haven't been that for longer than, yeah, November 13th was my first plant, 2019. So all of that, I try and make sure that everybody knows that I'm a noob. So anyways, Firebuds was taking us through and we did that, I think it was 15 weeks straight for the whole duration of an auto flower, flower uh, crop. And then, <clears throat> and that is to be repeated eventually. Right now, his son was in, uh, he had a kidney surgery. And so from that, we said, okay, let's hold off, wait until your son's uh, recovered, and then maybe we'll repeat the class again. Otherwise, I've had uh, people like Eliza, Eliza Theodoro, who was a UFC fighter who got, um, he got, what do you call it, a medical use exemption. So he's the first UFC fighter to actually be allowed to get stoned and, and, and fight, and train. And then uh, there was, these are just some, some more of like, uh, Bigger names, not necessarily in cannabis. And then also, so Joey Trapp, he came onto the show. He grows auto flowers in his backyard. So I thought it'd be interesting. He's a, he's a rapper. Um, and then <clears throat> I've had Jeff Lowenfels as well. Uh, Chef Sebastian Carosi came on and gave us a, a, a cooking demonstration. What did we do? We did butter. Oh, I can't remember. Some sort of waffles, man. It was delicious. And then... Uh, yeah, there's been, I've had Mandalorian genetics, quite a few. I tried to stay at first in the auto flower community. And then now I'm starting to venture out to people such as yourself who are doing things that not only apply to autos, but just to growing all together. Awesome. So what are some of the things that maybe you've learned along the way that I guess maybe you had learned from other sources, but then after doing it uh, firsthand, maybe realized it was not really what you thought. Um, I guess the one of the first things that um, first things that hit me the hardest, where I learned it a little later, was germination with auto flowers, where a lot of people are germing them in the paper towel, which I, you know, which I do with my photo periods, and uh, what I've actually gotten or sorry, what I actually do now is I just put them straight into the soil. And with that, I find that there's uh, there's very, very little complications. When you do it in the paper towel, I've seen auto flower uh, tap roots intertwine within the paper towel. And then you're, you've got it, you've got to try and get it out there without wrecking it. Um, what else? I mean, I, that's just like one of the first sort of novice things that I learned that really stuck with me. Um, yeah, let, I, I would have to think about some, some other answers to that. I suppose what, what is most important, the, one of the most important things I learned later is how uh, crucial your pH is, where I was allowing it to fluctuate and not really giving a crap about it and growing with salts though, and, and, and going in and, and having extreme issues while uh, watching my leaves curl or, or change colors and thinking that it was deficiencies where it was truly just the pH. Um, yeah. Awesome, so I, I, you're a pretty big fan of concentrates. What are you, uh, uh, we were talking a little bit about that before the show. Uh, what are you getting into these days in that regard? I pretty much grow, or, yeah, I grow for resin. So I'm, I'm all about solventless concentrates. I, I make it a point to only smoke hash or flour in my bong. Um, but yeah, to smoke hash or rosin. <clears throat> uh, really getting into making my own hash. And, and so my last crop, I've cut it down and froze it fresh and, and just made some hash out of it. That's been my main, main focus. So as far as the show is concerned. I mean, it's called the auto flower show. So I, I'm kind of always going to have to keep autos going, right? I'm aware that uh, to keep on brand, I'm going to have to, it doesn't mean I can't do both, but at, there's always going to have to be autos. Now, I would really like to hone my hash washing skills while autos get a little bit better, better in their THC production and start catching up to the hash numbers that photos are doing. And I'd really like to be able to, yeah, eventually once, you know, once the doors start opening and the Canadian market starts becoming, making a little more sense, excuse me, 
I'd really love to be able to um, kind of be a Canadian name in auto flowers and, 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 and wash hash and, and solventless extracts. Now for me, I don't like uh, BHO extracts. That's mainly the only, um, only thing I have access to is, is live hash rosin or BHO. And, um, and the BHO for me is just too high in THC. Uh, I have bipolar and I find that if I am, if I isolate THC and, and uh, take it, that's when high amounts of anxiety, which then present itself uh, as anger or even so far as to say psychosis. And so I really have to stick away, stay away from uh, BHO. Now I loved me shatter, but I didn't understand what it was doing to me. I, I had to quit it because it was making me angry. And then my friend shared me or shared with me some of his rosin. He's like, Hey man, I just made this, like I try this. And, and fuck from there, it was like concentrates with the whole entourage. And, and yeah, that's, that's what I love, man. It's, it's smoking hash, dabbing rosin and, and hash. So what are some of the better auto lines that are out there right now? I know um, people kind of generally, uh, I guess, have uh, maybe not the best view of autos. Um, I think the only person I've heard sell it all that well is uh, is Jeff Lowenfell. And uh, when he came on, talked about his newest book. Uh, if you are really interested in auto flowers, you could you know, definitely is a really good resource. Um, it's not the most technical book in terms of being, you know, ultra high end on the technical stuff, but it's a great one that like you can pick up and then also like you could give to your mom and it's, you know, if she's a gardener or your grandma and they can pick up on how to throw a couple autos and it's a good and kind of more beginner's guide. Um, it's, it's a really good one. So definitely a great book out there uh, for people that want to look to learn more about autos, especially newer growers. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, so tell us a little about, I guess, what, what cultivars you've been growing and, uh, and what kind of what, which ones you're seeing be, become more pop common with the autos. Um, okay. So as far as, uh, I just wanted to quickly touch on Jeff there. I am, I just started reading teaming with microbes for the first time. And so I want to say that if it's anything like those books, there's something about it that has this like poetic um, there's like a poetic logic behind it where it just reads really smoothly. Um, so I will definitely look into that one book. Now, uh, as far as autos and cultivars that, uh, that are on my radar or that I think people should look out for, um, there's obviously there's the big names. You've got Fast Buds and, and they're, they're doing it well. You've got uh, Mephisto as well. Um, and then there's Night Owl. <clears throat> But the person that I've spent uh, a lot of time growing because of my relationship with him is Firebuds. I'll say it again, Firebuds 101 and at Firebuds Genetics on Instagram. Um, his Care Bears are nothing short of like fermented wine gums when they're all grown out. I've, I've got two of them in the tent now. Um, and then he also, I've also grown a Mandalorian. I really like Mandalorian genetics, especially because of the Bobby's Widow. The Bobby's Widow itself was a 30 or 60 day flower. So from seed to harvest, it's a 60 day plant. And um, there's personally, I didn't yield that great because I, like I said, I was having pH issues. However, I've heard of people yielding over six ounces on this one plant. Now, um, the thing about autos is, is that you can't hold on to a pheno. You can't hold on to a cutting of it. So that seems to be uh, the toughest part about scaling it up, because uh, you have to constantly buy seeds. Now, for me at home, I really like the fact that it's a it's a constant variety. I smoke so much, and I'm smoking everything that I'm growing, that having a, a change all the time is really helping me. I'm not growing for the same. Uh, there's not the same motivations when you're just a home grower in a tent, right? There's no money involved. There's no hey, this flower's quick. This produces big numbers, this, that, and the other thing. It's more, I'm looking for flavors and, and stuff like that. So, yeah. So, back, I'll say the list again. We've got Fast Buds. We've got uh, Fire Buds 101 or Fire Buds Genetics. We've got Mephisto, Night Owl. Um, Dutch Passion was also, I my producer grew a Dutch Passion Blueberry. Um, and it was, by the end of it, 1.5 pounds. And it was in a 30 gallon living soil pot. 
So, and I don't remember if he got it tested or not. However, um, high teens, if he did, because I, I can't remember if it was that plant or the next one he grew that was that was tested. Anyhow, autos are coming. They're 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 definitely making waves. And I saw that that was, it was a, a, a bit of a niche a year ago. And now the niche is getting like really large and it's, it's starting to, to take over. There's a place in Seattle that is growing a, a, a medical facility in Seattle that's growing um, Bobby's Widows. And they did like a full room of them. And it was, yeah, I can't remember. I don't know the numbers because it's, yeah, but um Autos are going places, in my opinion. I personally think that if if you have outdoor space and you're like an LP in Canada or or whatever they call it in the states, like you're you're a licensed producer, um, that if you have a portion of your land and you you put that that portion to autos and then grow your photos for the rest of the year outside, you're going to get a buffer crop. You're going to see a bumper crop. You're going to see money sooner. There's, there's lots of validity to autos in a lot of different places. So what are, um, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a big fan of auto, flower, <clears throat> auto flowers because especially for newer growers in aquaponics, you know, they can, again, just toss it right in there. And, you know, while it might not be that, that super heavy yield, they can kind of get used to dealing with, um, you know, planting things in either dual root zone, or you, you can even be as lazy enough to throw it in there directly. You just won't get quite the same yields. Um, but do you want to talk about maybe some of the things that are a little bit more unique about it? I know they're definitely kind of pouty about being transplanted. Um, you're better off planting them in your, your final pot. Um, and do you want to talk about some of the other things that are maybe recommendations for how to care for your um, autoflower, or, you know, that might be different than, than a traditional one? Sure. So uh, I'll even touch on the transplanting thing first and foremost, because I think it's a myth that autos aren't transplanted well. I think what the issue is, is that uh, there's, there's, a, uh, there's a theory and that the taproot dropping, I don't know if they've proven this or not, but that the vertical taproot drop uh, hitting the bottom of the pot can trigger early flower. So if you're gonna transplant your autos, you have to be rather um, experienced in it. So for any new grower, yeah, I say straight up, start five gallon pot and, and, and plop it right in there. And then, um, and then what I'll say is to, I, I take my sprayer and I, I spray the area where the, where the seed is. And once it's out of the ground, I'm spraying around that. And then I'll take, well, after 10 days, I'll take whatever, um, if I'm in cocoa and, and it's a five gallon pot, I'll take a half gallon of water and I'll water around the edge of the pot, not close to the, to the seed so that the water leaches in to the, to where the roots are and the roots are grasping for that water. Um, yeah. So that would be for a newer auto grower. Now I know lots of people who are out there transplanting autos. I personally have transplanted autos and it works great. You just have to time it fantastically. Like it's, it's almost like it's 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 like two inches out of the dirt and you're transplanting it and it's got roots already sticking out of that ball. Um, what else? Autos uh, depends. So every cultivar, every auto I grow, I start off with, and this again, um, I'm a bottle. I use bottled nutrients uh, for the most part. I'm I'm diving into living soil. So out of the five pots that I have right now. Um, Two of them are regs. One of them is, is possibly going to be a male. So I'll call that male and get it down to four. But anyhow, uh, one of them is a living soil pot. So I'm testing it. And the others are all, all cocoa. So I'm trying to learn. But with, with, uh, with bottled nutrients, I am always feeding at, at the very beginning of their life. I'm going to give them a quarter strength. And then I'm going to up it until I notice a little bit of new burn on the tips and I'll back off. Or if it gets to a certain point, I'll just stop and leave it there. If I get to half strength and the plant looks great, or if it's at quarter strength and the plant looks happy, I'll keep it there. Um, so a little tip for that, if you're a bottle nutrient grower and you wanna cut down your the mix, if you wanna make a quarter strength mix, I mix a single gallon of what they say to do in the gallon and then I add three more gallons so I don't have to do any crazy math. Um, that was, that was a big little aha moment for me when I was a beginning grower, made it really easy for me. 
always pH, always test your pH with your water going in. Make sure you're good on that. Uh, let me think. I train my autos. I almost always train my autos trying to open them up. I People think that you can't top autos, but I totally disagree with that. You have to, you have to do it wisely. Um, as far as you say you're growing for the same cultivar and you notice one is taken off. Well, then, yeah, I would top that one, but I would top it no later than the fifth node. When it was presenting that sixth node, I would cut that sixth node off or, and, and I would, I would leave it at that fifth. Right. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's definitely a big myth with autos is that they can't be topped. What else? Uh, the potency and flavor is is getting there, if not there, uh, especially for at home growers. I don't think that I can grow a photo uh, any better than I can personally grow an auto with with my equipment. Now I'm not adding CO2. I don't have an AC unit. I'm totally rocking like a colder lung room to cool it down if need be, and and blowing it out the house. Like it's as simple as fuck as it gets with with decent equipment. That's it. And um, yeah, I mean, the numbers on autos, the thing about autos is that they are relatively quicker. If you're going past 90 days with an auto, what's the fucking point? Pardon my language. Um, but yeah, so if you're, if you've got your autos and you've gone, you're, you're cutting them down in 90 days. The one thing is, is that there is no, they have a decided lifespan. So there is no reaction time. They're going to show you what's wrong and you're either going to fix it or it's going to get worse. That's it. There's no, there's no trying to fix it in veg and then getting a good balance and then flipping it when you've got it all, all good to go. Right. Um, people think you can't clone autos. You can, it's tough. It doesn't get you entirely too far. Maybe, maybe six generations I've heard of it being done. And then by the end of it, they're pretty squirrely. Um, but it's doable. One thing I would say with autos, with people looking into autos is I would say, don't let somebody, somebody else's opinion on auto flowers, decide what you want to try with them. So for instance, forever people said, no, you can't top autos. No, you can't transplant autos. And no, you can't clone autos, but there's people out there doing all of these things successfully. So I would never let somebody else's opinion stifle what you think an auto might be able to do. So <clears throat> what, uh, what cultivars have you personally been growing over the last, uh, I guess it'd be about a year and change? Uh, okay, so I've done the, the Care Bears by Firebuds. I've done the Bobby's Widow by Mandalorian Genetics. I, per I currently have the Creme de la Creme Cross Forum Stomper from uh, Night Owl, I think it is, or Mephisto. Same, same shit, different pile. Um, you got Mephisto genetics and then night owl seeds, I think. Um, <clears throat> and then, yeah, a couple other fire buds cultivars, some fast buds cultivars. So I did the gelato auto from fast buds, which I washed that out and got full melt hash off of it, which I was pretty impressed with. Um, cause it was like my third time washing hash and I, I fucking still have some of it somewhere. Um, and then, uh, yeah, there was that. And then what else? The Wedding Cheesecake Auto from, from Fast Bloods was really nice. Uh, but the, the cultivar that I've grown more than any other cultivar is the Care Bears. And that's because it reminds me of, of a Zittles. And it's, it's, a, it's a Zittles Cross Blue Bear OG. And it's at an F3 at this point. And um, yeah, yeah. So that's my, I like a heavy indica. So I, I tend to keep on putting that one back into the into the into the garden so what uh what advice do you like so a lot of people are just kind of a little bit freaked out because of the you know you can't clone them as easy like you said um so how do people go about replicating you know I, you talked about german uh, pollination and all that but have you done any self-replicating uh, of the plants or have you gotten some males and you saved them and then crossed them or or how are you uh tell us about what you've been doing with your breeding so with, with me, I'm personally super intimidated by breeding at this point. Uh, like I said, I'm only into it just on, or just over a year. 
And uh, I don't even think I could comfortably or confidently tell you the scientific names for the parts of the plant. So I'm not, I'm not there yet, man. I'm so busy trying to put this, this show together where it, it takes a lot of my time just trying to do the, the, the admin stuff. I mean, I'm sure you know, right? Uh, there's that. And then I, I'm trying to, tr yeah, trying to work with hash and, and, and do other things with other people. And, and, and so, um, oh shoot, I lost my train of thought. What was the good. question? Um, uh, I, I lost my train of thought too. Um, you have a pretty cool auto flower 101 uh, class on as part of your content over there. Do you want to tell us more about that? Yeah. Um, so that was done with, with Firebuds. He was the host. And uh, it was a 15 week thing. We went live on Instagram. And the interesting part about going live on Instagram was I was able to um, have that, have the Q and A part of it. And so we would, we would do the class and he would teach us what we needed to do as, as know nothing growers, as new growers. And, uh, and yeah, for the week, right? So, I mean, for the first one, we popped the bean and then the next one they were up and, the, and he told us how to treat it for that week, so on and so forth. But the, the, the creme de la creme of those classes were the audience questions. So we would do the class for an hour. Instagram at that time would cut us off after an hour. We would go live again and I'd be able to pop the questions up on the screen. And, and it, uh, it, it drew a rather large audience. Now we also did, um, we did live giveaways every class. And then we, we did a big grand prize at the end where we tried to set up somebody as close as we possibly could to grow from scratch at home. Certain things we couldn't get like a tent and a AC unit, like a exhaust fan and, and can. But other than that, it was, um, yeah, they got everything. There was, there was genetics, there was TMB, nutrients, uh, fucking lights, everything. It was great. Now, the thing about that class that was, that was most interesting was um, how it brought Firebuds and myself together in, in one spot and, and allowed, it allowed us to talk to the audience like they were in the grow room with us. You know what I mean? And that was, that. I think there was a, there was a, a person, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. It was just like you were chilling in the living room with us. And that was, that's what made it relatable content. Yeah, those are always fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, I guess, is there any, um, what tips would you have for, for newer autoflower growers, especially uh, people that maybe are trying to figure out how to go about it? Oh, well, I mean, first and foremost, you, the thing about autos is that, yeah, I mean, I think I've, I've touched on this already, but the fact that they have a decided lifespan is going to, is going to make your, it's going to make the journey, uh, it depends, it could be more stressful or less stressful. If you understand that it's going to end soon, and yes, you, you might have made mistakes as a new grower, but the next one's going to start right away, and now you've learned from those mistakes, then it's not so stressful. Um, I grew a photo for the first one, and I found that, uh, that it just took way too long for me growing one plant, right? With the autos, with the autos being so quick, yeah, some of the bud that I grew sucked but at least i had bud and i wasn't i wasn't you know catching up after myself so uh there's a lot of times where you might want to rip that tent down don't first and foremost just get something growing even if you got a blurp over light from a friend off of amazon that or that he got off of amazon just start and and just put it in the dirt and 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 get there um after that i think really getting involved in the Instagram community was a big step for me. I learned a lot on Instagram, even just scrolling, seeing people doing things where I'm like, shit, that makes sense. Hey, that makes sense. And then, and then you'll find that you reach out to those people and they're actually just so kind and they want to help. And they're like, and they're stoked that they did that. So um, yeah, my biggest tip would be to not be afraid to start and to, and to, to reach out to other growers. Um, even myself in the DMs uh, at the Auto Flower Show on on Instagram, and I'm always there. I, it's going off right beside my head right here. It's like I'm I'm constantly 
on there, uh, managing the DMs, helping people out. I think one thing, one, one thing I haven't really touched on is defoliation with auto flowers, less necessary. Um, you can still do it, but I personally, I'll tuck as many fan leaves as I can before cutting them off. Uh, this, because you, the auto flower has a decided lifespan, like I keep saying, it causing stress uh, will only affect your bottom end, will only affect your yield at the end. Uh, if you stress it too many times and stunt it and, and, and start affecting its growth rate, well, it's still going to finish when it was going to finish. There's been times where I've seen uh, strange things come out of autos where, you know, weird mutations or uh, stunted, no growth for two weeks and then just takes off again. Um, all of these things are, I talk to other people and as I, or as I start, or as I started, I would talk to other people when these weird things would happen. And, and as they happen now, I more realized that, hey, it's life, right? You're, you're, you're sowing seeds. Things are going to grow weird. Things are going to do weird things. I'm not by any means a scientific person, uh, yet I'm still doing it successfully. So you can, you can take solace in, in what it, wherever your intellect lays, you'll, you'll get this done. I think that, uh, yeah, I think that growing cannabis or growing anything is for everyone. I think that if you need some peace, Growing autos is really cool because you watch them real and they grow like in front of your eyes. And, and it's almost like, it's almost like, it's almost like pets for millennials where, <laughs> where there's instant gratification from it. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully that answered your question. Awesome. So um, you're in Canada. What part of Canada are you in? I'm in BC, man. I uh, born and raised BC. Spent most of my life in uh, in Kelowna, in the Okanagan. Okay. So, what are your thoughts on the rollout there in BC? On the on the on the prohibition 2.0. Yeah, prohibition 2.0. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's. I don't know, man. I without saying too much, I don't go to the dispensary. Like uh, they're gouging. It's insane. I, I'll go there because they'll have, um, they have a drink there. It's like $3. It's not a big deal for can of, can of, you know, can of edibles. But the thing is, is that our, there's many wildly crazy things about what they did. Like for instance, I mean, you deal in edibles on the legal market. We can only, all of our edibles are limited to 10 milligrams max per package. And it's like, well, what the fuck am I supposed to do with that? Do I have to buy 20 chocolate bars to get lit? Like, you know, to, to, to feel to feel any sort of physical relief that these edibles are trying to trying to do for me. Anyways, I'll go in there and I'll go buy a can and somebody's buying an eighth of flour for $70. And I'm, I just can't believe it. It's it, it, that blows my mind. And then Another part about it, I mean, we can grow four plants legally, but there's a lot of hoop, hoops about it. You can't do it in public. Like, like you, sorry, you can't do it in view of public. So if it's in your backyard, but there's somebody else can see it. Like, I think there's something about that where you're not allowed to do that. Now, one thing is, is that I rent. So I'm not growing outside. That's for damn sure. Uh, and yeah, what, what else, man? There's lots I could complain about. It took a long time for concentrates to hit the market. And then now I've tried some of the, some of the concentrates on the market because I'm curious, I guess. Curiosity is mainly it where I'm like, I'm making hash rods and what's for sale, right? I'm making, making this, what's for sale? I'm growing this, what's for sale? And yeah, it's insanely bad. I've worked on, on properties where it was, yeah. Things just happen in the in the market where it just blows my mind. But it was not it would never be something that you would treat your plants or so, a way you would treat your plants when you're only growing four, or when you're when you're only when you only have a hundred lights, versus you know these huge facilities that are going on. Um, I've back in the union days. If anybody wants to know what uh, BC used to look like during the the free people's market days, check out. There's a great documentary on it called The Union. So it's about all the different pieces. It's it's a quite a cool documentary. 
the union was made in Kelowna. And that's where I'm from. There you go. Yeah, so that shit was in Kelowna when that movie came out. It was every third house was a grow up, like per capita kind of thing. That's how much cannabis has been grown in, in the Okanagan. Um, but yeah, it's it's just wild. I've looked at I've looked at buds that I've gotten from the dispensary with a microscope, not a microscope, a Jewish leaf, and uh, and just been blown away by the things that I see on there. You know, cat food, other things like that. So yeah, my opinion on it is grow your own, or or you know, get a guy, meet a grower. Sorry, I didn't realize my mic was open when I coughed. I apologize. That's okay. There's the, I mean, yeah, the black market is live and, and well in Canada. I think that's safe to say. And you got a, so what are some of the um, strains that you, you've you been smoking on over the years up there? I know BC's got lots of different wonderful. You got, was it Renee? And you got, uh, what is it, seaweed? And you got a bunch of famous ones up there from, from yeah. BC. I mean, I'm, What's my the one I've been smoking lately is uh, garlic sherbet, but that's an in-house genetic. And then, um, like that I've been finding lately, there's dosi do, lots of dosi do, uh, cactus breath I found lately that was really nice. Um, some stuff called island cotton candy, I don't know. Um, and then, but like man tough to say what my favorite strain is but i do always love a wedding cake i mean it's it's pretty cliche so to say but it's the one that makes me the hungriest and 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 helps me calm, calm my adhd the most so it's uh yeah that's my favorite that's my go-to for sure cookies or or wedding awesome um we had uh, see what some questions from chat. What are what makes a good autoflower breeder? I think integrity. Anybody can. Oh, that's what you were asking about. You're asking about me breeding. If we could go back to that after this question. But what makes a good autoflower breeding it breeder is uh, yeah integrity. Anybody can slap, can buy a pack of auto regs, and uh, and 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 either open pollinate or pollinate uh and 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 sell you the seeds but it's a matter of uh pheno hunting and and looking you know hunting out the red genetics doing the crosses get, having a test team uh putting it all through that if somebody tells you that they won't feminize their genetics because they don't feel comfortable or they're or sorry they, they won't feminize their genetics because they're not completely confident in it yet but they'll still sell you the regs that's a decent breeder to me. That means that, that, that person is like, they'll, they'll still, they'll tell you what's up, but they'll, they, they're not going to feminize. They're not going to lock in a genetic that they're, that they're not ready to lock in yet. Um, what else makes a good breeder? Fucking years in the game. I think, I think that's a big one. Um, for me, I mean, it would be, I have, X amount of followers on Instagram, and it would be very easy for me to just start uh, auto flower genetics, the auto flower show genetics, and and just hawk beans and pollen chuck. But that's yeah, there's a principle behind it. It's yeah, the integrity is a huge thing. I'd talk to the breeders, or I mean, word of mouth is huge, right? Uh, as far as say you can't get a hold of night owls, say you can't get a hold of firebuds, say you can't get a hold of of uh, well, Night Owl is Daz, uh, of, of Mandalorian Genetics, uh, full duplex. Well, fuck, their name has been been all over the, the auto flower community for X amount of, of years. So, yeah, I think you could just have, have some confidence in what they're doing. But as far as buying genetics on Instagram for people that you don't really know, I'm not about it. I don't do it. I don't suggest anybody do it. I think you should talk to the breeder or have heard about them from a hundred different people. Oh, and then you asked me about breeding myself. So I don't breed for that exact reason. I just, I, I would feel like a pollen chucker. So I've grown a lot of me, uh, regs. So a lot of not feminized auto flowers, but I call the males as soon as I see nuts, just pff, I kill it. All right. 
We had uh, someone else ask, would you grow autos in the Caribbean? Um, I know I definitely would would probably lean against that just because you don't really have to do those quick turns there. You have 12, 12 year round photos yep. are going to basically behave like autos there anyway. Yep. Um, so there's not really a, an advantage um, no. other than just faster flowering times, but you're sacrificing a lot. And then, you know, they they really are great for Northern and, and far North and far Southern uh, latitudes where, you know, you, you got that cold coming and, you, and your growth season is, is very short and you're trying to squeeze in some flour uh, on the outdoor. Um, you know, that, that's really where it's gonna be a, a huge advantage or people trying to do two or three harvests a year uh, on the same acreage um, in, in you know central or southern half of the US that, that, that can be an advantage. But I also noticed that you know a lot of the autos really hate the heat. I have not had any auto flower strains and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but none of them that have the tolerance of say a Durban poison or some of the other stuff that can take the heat outside uh, or some of the other sativa stuff that we grow, um, or sativa dominant, I guess, or traditionally sativa dominant, where, however uh, technically you want to get. Um, but uh, I found that, that that's really been probably the single complaint that I have about autos is that, you know, if you're dealing with any, you know, I'm here in Oklahoma, right? So, you know, <laughs> it gets a bit toasty sometimes in the summer. Uh, and they just simply seem to be more affected by heat stress, I guess, than, than some of the others. And I don't know if that's just because the auto flowers, similar to CBD, is a little bit more pigeonholed in terms of the genetic origin. So that, you know, that those genes have been kind of stabilized in that, you know, that portion to a lesser extent. I've also noticed with, uh, and, and as another example of a similar type of thing, um, CBD cultivars, I've noticed, if you keep them under 24 hours of light, um, seem to really have a higher chance of throwing nanners and throwing male flower and hermaphroditing under 24 hours, where I can take that same cultivar and give it 18 hours of light and, and six hours at nighttime, and it'll stop throwing those flowers, the male flowers. And it has something to do with just that hormonal stress for some reason. Now, are you talking CBD auto strains? Uh, this was CBD photo strains. I have not done much in the way. I Only one time have I grown any CBD autos so far. And, and uh, again, I, they just, I wasn't impressed enough to, I, I, you know, I wouldn't buy that particular seed again. Yeah. Um, okay. So as far as temperatures, if you're exceeding 90 degrees, if you're exceeding 85 degrees, that auto, like you could, it could go get into my tent or into 85 in my tent for an hour or two in the auto wouldn't be too mad, but it would definitely not be happy. Right. And then if you kept it constantly above 80, yeah, it would be fucking, it'd be cooked. Um, one thing to consider is that the ruderalis is like, a, is Siberian, is it not? Or yeah, it was originally from, from Russia. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I should, it's funny that I asked you that, but yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it, it survives cold much better. It does well in colder temperatures. So I wouldn't say that the Caribbean, yeah, I would totally agree with pretty much everything you said. Also, just you're going to get better trichome density out of some of the better photo period strains at that latitude. Um, you know, whereas, you know, at the northern latitudes, you, ha you get a little bit less trichome density. And again, at it's going to matter a little bit less with the with those auto flowers because you're you know they're already slightly less yield and no big deal if it's slightly less right you're just going to plant extra plants in that same space because they don't take up the same amount of square footage so we can increase our plant count in order to adjust for that so um that is kind of one other nice thing about autos is you can run significantly more plants uh, per acreage uh, than, than you could otherwise. So, um, you know, depending on what your goal is, you know, that, that can be a better harvest depending on your metrics. Yeah, and I mean, I've seen autos get huge, huge, where uh, full duplex this summer grew one of his anvils in the outside in the dirt and it got over six foot tall. Yeah, and I've seen some people that have some pretty large autos, but most of them are, you know, 120 days, 140 days, and it's like, Longer. you know, at that point, wait, <laughs> what's the point of the auto? You know, like, that's cool if you just want the sake of, like, saying that it'll just do it on its own, but, you know, again, just going back to the advantages of being at the equator is, is that I, as long as I have my nursery, you know, with the lights on for four hours a day, I can, you know, I don't really need to have much of a power overhead because in 12, 12 year round, you know, yep. it's one of the big advantages to Jamaica, you know, and Barbados and, um, you know, other places like Colombia, you know, all those places are going to be big for that. 
one thing I will say is that uh, I was on Firebud's uh, test team for one of his uh, releasing, or recently released genetics, which was uh, the Animaniacs. And all, while on that test team, I mean, he actually had us test the genetics. It wasn't just like, hey, grow these out and take pictures for me. Um, and he did make us, I think it was 95 or had us, instructed us to do 95 degrees for three hours. And what he was testing for was trying to herm the plant. So even going too high might, for too long might even herm out an autoflower. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, I'm, I, across the board, I think that all plants need sleep, even autos. I would always recommend at least a minimum of four hours, uh, six hours being a little bit better for, for sleeping. Now that being said, they will grow under 24. They'll grow under 12, 12, but they will do. I, I grow mine under 20. You know, I, I, but at first to get to learning, I did them 24 and I still got flower. You know, I still, it, it wasn't awesome. You know, but it wasn't like it wasn't a great yield, but it still grew, is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's the nice thing about the autos is that you're always getting something to smoke at the end of the thing, even if you you screw it up. And they are a little bit more sensitive to a total yield impact, but they are, uh, you know, you're always going to have something and, you know, you don't have to worry about someone screwing the lights up or, you know, you can have a couple of things go wrong that maybe would be a little more punishing with a photo. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's kind of a trade off. Yeah, I think that um, I think they're hard for photo periods, photo period growers to start growing at first. But I think for a newbie, it's it's a decent introduction. There's things that you just don't have to pay attention to, like you do with photos. And and like for instance, like I did, I didn't have a timer. I didn't have to worry about them uh, seeing light in the dark, and and yada yada yada. Right, so. There was there was things I didn't have to focus on while I could produce the show and 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 get this all going. It started off as a one man gig, right? Very cool. So, do you have any upcoming guests coming up that are uh, you're looking forward to having on? Yeah, man, I got I got a, quite a few actually. Let me look at my calendar quickly so I can get the names and dates right. Um, and you want to tell everybody your website uh, while we're while you're pulling that up? Yeah, sure. It's www.theautoflowershow.com. Uh, it's actually the autoflower show on everything. So like TikTok, uh, Twitter, I think might be autoflower show, and then everything else is yeah the autoflower show. I'm on Spotify, Apple, uh, Instagram. I don't know, I can list it all off, but I won't. Um, so on March 1st, I'm super excited to have uh, Kevin from Honor Bags in. <clears throat> and then I've got Visionary Hydro on February 22nd, but let's go to some closer dates here. Uh, this coming week, I've got Future Harvest and they're talking about their new product. And then the following week, Microbial Mass, which I'm not entirely sure what we're talking about yet. I think that they might have some announcements, but they also just have some frequently asked questions that they want to go over. Uh, and then Visionary and then Honor Bags. <clears throat> now, sorry. Uh, yeah, all of my all of my interviews are on Monday, 10 a.m. PST live on Instagram. Awesome. Yeah. Great guy way to start your week off. Yeah, I figure here, here's my here's my theory on that is uh, I'm not battling with uh, big name releases, not necessarily podcasts, but more like people dropping their music or you know what I mean, like big names like J Cole or 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 Kendrick Lamar isn't gonna drop a song on the same time that I'm live, and people are just gonna go click on that and listen to it. I feel like a boomer for not knowing who those people are. Yeah. Okay. Who's who's dropping music that you do know? I don't know. You know, I've mostly my biggest thing. The last time I played a bunch of music is when MF Doom died here at the beginning of the year. So that was yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's a perfect. Yeah. Those guys are just yeah. They're new. They're just who came to mind who would be dropping music. But even right. like when like okay so for instance like when Tribe Called Quest dropped that album a while back. I would have been listening to that over listening to a lot of podcasts. 
<laughs> or sorry, not Tribe, because uh, when Q2, when 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 he dropped that album with noodles on it. Anyways, I'm just. No, it's, it's interesting. I haven't I haven't heard of anyone else um, talk about like other media being like something that they thought about and it's something i had never thought of and i think it's a really cool and interesting thing for you to bring up i, I didn't mean that in a ridicule ridicule kind of way i meant that in like a that's actually like you know something i hadn't thought of sorry my dog is being whiny that's okay um, <laughs> yeah uh but uh yeah no that's super cool that uh um that you have that in the morning and, and you know uh, like you're saying there really isn't a lot of people doing uh, content on monday mornings and definitely is a a cool way for people to have something to, to look forward to to start their week off so that's super super neat yeah yeah that that was the thing and then another thing was we did the class on sundays and it was i did that i picked that same time i picked what it was i think it was 8 a.m though and I, but i picked it on sundays for the same reason but then i figured i figured out that actually some of my audience actually quite a few of them had church or like other shit that they had to be at early sunday mornings and uh and and so i yeah switched it to mondays as much as possible if a guest needs sundays because they have to work on that monday or or whatever because this isn't their full-time thing then then yeah of course i'll adjust and and you'll know accordingly i post i i try and keep a week ahead of schedule on the instagram so this week i shared the Feb february 15th episode post you know so that um this coming week is future harvest and then the following week is is microbial mass so i try and keep everybody updated i just keep it in the i keep it in the stories i keep countdowns going but it's interesting that you uh or that that came up and, and you like that what where that comes from is being a musician and and i was i learned everything that i learned according to music according to um selling your content selling you're or pushing your content out as a musician. And then I applied that all. I, I figured, my, I, th I thought to myself, I said, Hey, what, what is thinking outside the box? If every box has already been thought of, uh, can I just think about this other box while I'm in this box? So as I'm thinking about how to navigate it as a musician with cannabis account. And so, yeah, like that, another thing that, that is really key is that you're not, I'm not selling the episodes or these interviews or, and I say sell, but I'm not promoting or whatever the word you want to use. Um, I'm not pushing those. I'm pushing the journey. The, 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 yeah, it's not, it's not these things that I'm like, Hey, check out my girl. Hey, look at this. Hey, look at that. It's more, you're, you gotta do it all right. You gotta show everybody that your, your whole day. And, and that's how they, they, learn to what's the word relate with you man i play music i go skateboarding i fish and i grow weed and i do it all on the account and that's what makes people keep coming back because they don't know what they're going to see today whether it's going to be me doing a big three flip off of, off a big drop or it's going to be me linked in on a fucking fish tight line with, with a fly rod or it's going to be mainly in my grill and we're going to learn about what we're here to learn about so i don't know man i think it, that all came from being a musician and thing about music is there's a million of them a million musicians out there there's only two autoflower podcasts and i'm one of them cool yeah awesome we had a, a somebody asking chat what about an auto stud to a photo femme seed like uh well then you'd have to work it so you, i think it's something like okay so what he's asking is what if i take an auto or take autoflower pollen and pollinate a, 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 a photo, right? That's what he's asking. So yeah, there's a percentage of those seeds that would be auto flowering. And I think it's something like five to 10%. So it would be unethical to even give those away as auto flowers. Um, but what you could do is you, if you don't have the space, you and a buddy or you and three buddies or whatever, you grow out a hundred of them and you find the ones that flower automatically and then you 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 pollinate with those and you go back into it and you and you try and work to that auto flower genetic that's what you want to do lots of people what breeders will do is they'll find they'll take two auto flowers and put them together but instead of just doing that and, and putting them on the market they'll test them out and all that stuff that i have been talking about but they'll also get 
the what's the word I'm looking for? Um, they'll get the blessing. That's not the word I'm looking for, but they'll get the blessings of the of the original breeders of those genetics that they're going to cross and then put out. And usually they've already done their own work on something too, right? So you can do it, and those seeds will work outside, right? But other than that, um, yeah, it's a pheno hunt. You're you're looking at a long time, a lot of pheno hunting. All right. Well, hopefully that answered their question. Well, do you have any uh, anybody coming up here in the next episode or two that you want to promote now that we're uh, starting to wrap up? Yeah, I don't know, man. I think that, uh, yeah, take a look out for Future Harvest. I mean, they're my sponsor. They're, I fucking, they've taken care of me since day one. Uh, Future Harvest Development on Instagram. And then Microbial Mass, as soon as I met those guys, they were on board too. And um, I, I absolutely love their product. And everybody that I've gotten their product in the hands of has been super happy. They actually are so confident about their product that if you go to their website, I think it's microbromass.com uh, and use the code enhance, you can get a free bottle. Shipping's on you. Um, as far as uh, stuff for me, I, I have just released uh, <clears throat> my, my new merch store. So I just dropped that, which is uh, teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash the dash autoflower dash shop, which you can get. Uh, yeah, there's hoodies on there for under 60 bucks Canadian. And then, yeah. What else, man? I've also got the Patreon. You can find me on Patreon, the Autoflower Show on Patreon. And then otherwise, um, I do want to say live here, uh, my producer wanted to, wanted to, wanted me to let you know that he's a huge fan and, uh, and, and to thank you for everything that you do. And, and that comes from me as well, man. I really appreciate you having me on the show. Sure, yeah, and if anybody wants to check out the episode that we did the other day, I threw that up over on the, the audio version of the podcast. You can check that out as well. So has a link to his website on there. We'll have a link to his website here in the chat in the description if you're listening to this or watching it on the video version. And, uh, yeah, thanks a lot for coming on. Why don't you tell everybody again how to find you, your Instagram, your website, and all their socials. All right, man. So uh, it's at the Autoflower Show on a ton of socials on Instagram, on TikTok, on Oh, shoot. What else? I think that might be it for the at in the autoflower show. And then the website is www.theautoflowershow.com. Um, and yeah, I'm most active on Instagram. If anybody wants to reach out, say hi, please do. I, uh, I love to hear from everybody and anybody. And um, yeah, I always like to sign off with saying uh, until next time, everybody, I'm Jesse B and I'll, I'll always baked, but never burnt. And uh, yeah, man, thank you so much for having me on. Awesome. Well, um, thanks for coming on and uh, it was a blast having you. Yeah, man. I, yeah, we should do this again. I'd like to, I'd like to have you back on to, the, to my show as well, but uh, we'll talk about that. I quickly didn't want to say that you put our episode out before I had the time to do it. I was like, oh, I beat me to it. Shit. <laughs> So mine's coming too, um, but it is, if you guys wanted to watch the video of it, it is live on my Instagram TV. But yeah, man. So I will, uh, I'll talk to you later. Sorry. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers, man. That'd be awesome to have him on and uh, always good to have a, uh, to uh, always good to cross pollinate with other media producers and, uh, and help help each other's um, um, you know audiences grow and uh, yeah especially auto flowers been a ton of auto flower um, producers on and uh, yeah we have some really cool guests in the pipeline some some pretty big names uh, some people that you guys when they come on the show. Uh, and then we have some some super cool stuff, hopefully next week or the week after. I have some pretty big announcements to make. Um, it's just some cool stuff happening this year. This year's looking a lot better than last year. And uh, yeah, lots of cool stuff, lots of big projects, lots of fun things going on. And uh, yeah, um, just been busy. Uh, Marty is actually pretty sick right now. Um, he is actually not able to join us today. He does not have COVID, but he is sick. Uh, so, um, you know, that's uh, 
put some thoughts to him and smoke burn one for Marty. And uh, hopefully he'll be back with us next week or the week after. And um, yeah, I know that definitely also caused a, a little bit of a delay on him getting the rest of the, some of the newer content up on the, uh, the class. So uh, bear with us. Uh, he's, he's getting it up. It's just going a little bit slower. I know we were kind of on two or three day intervals there. Uh, it might be slightly longer just uh, until he's over the sickness. So I do apologize for that. Um, but we do have some, some new content that we've been working on kind of in the meantime while he's been laid up. So uh, we'll, we'll more than make up for it, I promise. Uh, we also have some really cool new new builds that we're going to be doing some videos up here in the near future. So it'll be, be kind of neat uh, to add that to the class as well, especially on the commercial side. And um, yeah, some, some neat stuff coming up later this month. Uh, we're going to be headed off to an East Coast Grow uh, that, that's coming online. And um, that'll be fun to, to shoot some, some video at. And um, let me think, what else is going on right now? That's about it. Um, be sure to check out our class over at apmjclass.com and our nutrient store over apmjnutes.com. Uh, we have a whole wide range of nutrient solutions for your aquaponic uh, dosing. Uh, that's based on the number of gallons of your system. So you can put that in there if you want to get your grow kits and, uh, and it gives you a whole bunch of stuff to dose there. And then we also have, um, what else do we have going on? I think that's the most of it. And then, you know, apmjclass.com, we have our full aquaponic cannabis class with over 600 lectures. So uh, definitely check that out uh, if that's something you're looking to learn more information on. And uh, if not, um, thanks for joining us. Uh, I think at some point this weekend, we may or may not do a little bit of a short short show on some particular topic um, that is gonna, I think you guys will find interesting and, and neat. And then, um, yeah, uh, other than that, um, I will, uh, I'll catch you guys later. Uh, you can check us out at uh, Going With Fishes Podcast, SoundCloud, iTunes, uh, 